Okay, so the next step is to show what it means to be true, what, what it means for a formula to be true, given the variable assignment. So we're going to define uh, this symbol up here, which says this symbol, we're going to read this symbol as, as the formula phi is true in the structure M, where M has an interpretation of all constant functions and relations according uh, to the variable symbol assignment uh, S. Okay, so that's what that symbol means. Um, that symbol right there. So, okay, so so far, so we are given a variable assignment, we are given a formula, a well-formed formula, and, and a structure M. Again, M is given to us, and it contains M, and it contains assignments for the constants, the functions, and the relations. And we want to define this guy. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Again, we're going to do it by structural uh, recursion on the formulas now. Before we did on terms, now on formulas. So how are we going to do this? Let's do this. So we are going to define, so let's put definition. And we are going to consider all the possible cases. So let's say that we start with an atomic formula. So atomic formulas are of two forms. So we're going to define these holes of the atomic formula, some term equals to another term according to S. That's going to be the case if uh, the, the, uh, the value that we are assigning to those terms according to our variable assignment, which is, and this is a number, this is something that belongs to M, right? Remember that uh, once we assign all the variables, we can assign all the terms, it's equal to the whatever value we are assigning to the other term that also belongs to M. If we got a relation, let's say the ith relation and has added tk t1 again i'm i'm coloring red everything that is a symbol um so the rest uh the s here is not a symbol it's a variable assignment and that little funny symbol with the two lines that just means is true apart is true in this model and m is not a symbol so the symbols are here only the things that are in red and that's gonna be true if and only if this tuple s bar s bar of t1 tk this is a k tuple right this is a tuple that belongs to where this one belongs to m to the k belongs to the interpretation of the relation r sub i namely h sub i so h sub i is somewhere here is the one that corresponds to R sub i. Okay, so these definitions so far are absolute. Now, we are going to start defining this by recursion. So we're going to say that uh, the formula... Okay, so here I forgot to say according to S. The formula, a formula of the form, let's start with uh, not phi and this is red, it's going to be true according to S uh, if and only if uh, it's not the case. Okay, so I'm defining uh, this notion of uh, truth on the formula not phi to be the opposite of whatever it is on phi, right? So phi, notice phi is a smaller formula than not phi Right? It was built one step before, uh, before we put the not. So we can assume we know how to interpret this guy. And then once we know that, we can define what it means for this to be true. And it's the opposite of this. Okay, so we are doing recursion here. Then we're going to define uh, 
what it means for phi and c to be true according to interpretation s if and only if phi is uh, if this one holds and this one holds. So now we are using the and of standard mathematics to define the and in logic. Um, we are going to do the same for or. So the same for or. We are using the or, let's say, from like truth assignments that we had before. And once we have, um, well, actually, just having or and not, that's enough to do all the connectives that we saw before. So we don't need to define implies and if and only if they would follow from these guys how to interpret those form formulas because they uh, they can be built out of these guys the a and the if and only if and the implication and if not like if uh, you can just look them up on the textbook so not too complicated uh, it gets interesting when we get to formulas of the form for every x phi holes in S uh, according to I mean, when is this going to be true? Well, this is going to be true uh, if when it, for all the possible variable assignments that we uh, for all the possible assignments that we give to X that formula is true. So that means we got to change uh, the assignment of x to anything and uh, whatever we change it for we, we change the value of x we should still get a formula that is true and we're gonna write this as follows you're gonna say for every I mean, let's change color for every element of our domain uh, if we consider the variable assignment where we change x to a so we forget about the previous value that it had on s and now we change it to a so now it's a new variable assignment that x gets mapped to a instead of whatever it was before uh, we get that the formula phi uh, is true okay so the variable x um, in in here was not a free variable because it had the for every x right it was bound to this for every x right here so it was not a free variable so actually it didn't matter what s assign x to because it wasn't free we're not using it here x is not free anymore because now it's not quantified so it matters what where x goes to and what we're saying is that for every possible value that it can go to the formula still needs to be true. And finally, we need to define what it means for an existential formula to be true, which uh, you can, I'm hoping you can guess by now what this should mean. If um, there exists now some element in our domain such that this formula phi is true according to the variable assignment where now x is assigned to that number a okay so it's saying there is a way to assign the variable x to an element so that the formula becomes true that's what it means to, that's how you make this existential formula true. There is something in M that if you plug in for X, you're going to make it true. Okay, so this definition is pretty formal. It's a definition by recursion. It uses our previous defined notions of R, or and for all. Uh, but we are defining now as a new thing, something that has to do as a new symbol. We have a string right here. We have a structure right here and a variable assignment. Okay, so this is a whole relation of like these three things: this formula, the structure, and the variable assignments. And we are telling them 
when uh, is true or not true. So we'll see some example in class. Um, uh, one last theorem uh, about this, uh, which should be true. No, this, uh, this is something that we expect to be true. If you have two variable assignments, S1 and S2, and they are different, and we have a well-formed formula phi, and we know that these two variable assignments, they are different, but they coincide on the free variables of phi. Not on all the variables of phi, but at least on the free variables of phi, they give you the same result, the same element from M. Okay, so these guys, they go from bar to M. And we are saying on the free, on the free variables, they give you the same thing. And then the claim is that this formula phi is true according to S1, if and only if it's true according to S2. So essentially, this is saying that all it matters about the variable assignments is what they do on the free variables. If you change these variable assignments elsewhere, you're not going to change whether the formula is true or not. To change whether the formula is true or not, you have to change it in the free variables. And that's what you expect, right? So all the, all the variables that should matter are the free variables of the formula. How would you guys prove something like this? Um, we're going to do it in class. But let's see. Let me, I want you guys to try before. So let me give you a hint. What do you use? Yeah, I use induction on formulas. Right, so that means you start with uh, the atomic formulas, and then you see it is true for the atomic formulas, um, and then you say, well, is it, is it true for a conjunction? Is it true for a disjunction? Is it true for a negation? Uh, is it true for a for all? And you do it for all of those. All right, see you guys uh, in class.